Brisas del Mar, my sous chef Miguel got me into this cevicheria. We usually go there like in between shifts, you know, between lunch shift and dinner shift. ¿Qué nota? Bueno, entonces, ¿qué nos vamos a comer hoy? El atómico especial. Old school cevicheria, they do Colombian style ceviches. Cebolla comiendo y vinagre. Nos espera una noche larga, entonces necesitamos venir acá a recargar energía. We add ketchup and mayonnaise, which is pretty random, but they taste so delicious. It's a great way to start your evening. Mmm. Mira la cámara. Dígale. Qué bueno está. Oh, muy bueno. Mmm. Mmm. My name is Daniel Castaño, and I have a couple of restaurants in Bogota. One of them is Emilia Romagna, which is Italian-inspired uh, trattoria. Italian food is such a global cuisine nowadays that you just find it everywhere. It molds itself to whatever environment it lands on. It's all about sourcing local ingredients and adapting them to traditional recipes. Now we're going to go ahead and make our bucatini amatriciana. Uh, this is bucatini. Bucatini is a very special type of pasta that has a little hole in it. Traditionally, they say that the sauce goes into the holes and it just makes for a really more delicious dish. I studied uh, mechanical engineering and quickly realized that that was not my passion. I decided to take a sabbatical year and went to New York City to study cooking and started working with Mario Batali. I worked with him for about eight years, and after all that, I moved back to Bogota to open my restaurants. Basically, what I learned in my whole career in the States, respect ingredients. If all of the things that you have to make a dish are good on their own, there's no way that the dish itself is gonna come out anything but spectacular. Now this is a very serious technique, which is making a mess of this plate like I'm doing right now. I like to eat a lot, and I guess that's what drove me to study cooking. Bogota is going through a really good time right now, politically, economically, culturally. There's uh, been a really big boom of like new and interesting restaurants, and I'm very happy to be a part of that. I had some friends at Emilia Romagna. Santiago Arango, who is uh, the owner of a restaurant called La Fama. Gaylin Quinn, she organizes the Bogota Food and Wine Festival. And we also had Felipe Arizabaleta, another colleague of mine. <laughs> there was just like four of us going to, to La Fama. There was this big bus waiting for us. <laughs> it was too big for us. Okay, we're going to go to Carrera Quinta with calle 65. Go to the left, please. And the right, the left. We went to La Fama. La Fama is a great barbecue spot. It feels kind of like a, like a true barbecue joint. such a great atmosphere there. It's always like packed, and they have the picnic tables. They use all Colombian meat, and they're using these uh, American techniques of smoking, but using uh, Colombian beef, using Colombian products, and it takes its own identity. We didn't want to import the beef, 
we want to use local stuff. Everything here is local, but with a with a barbecue technique. These guys do American style southern barbecue and they're doing a great job you can see it here this is the smoke ring that every single person who does barbecue is going to want that's actually pretty remarkable they have especially a really great watermelon cocktail that has gin in it and some campari jalapeno juice in it so it's kind of spicy and salty and that was my favorite of the night. It's delicious. I'm so happy that I got it. Oh, este es mi favorito. Let's go. Now we're heading to Bruto, which is my favorite restaurant. We got on the big bus again, <laughs> and uh, we went to Bruto. All right. What is this? So, in the best in the best Colombian style, what once started as two people is now ten. No. <laughs> Bruto. It's uh, Felipe Arizabaleta's place. Uh, he does really great Spanish food there, like Spanish tapas kind of food. The place was packed. It must have been like 9.30, which is like the rush hour for restaurants here in Bogota. It was really funny because we were all expecting to have like this big table waiting for us and it turns out that there was no table. <laughs> we, had, we had to like stand around the bar, which was great. Drinks don't have to go very far. It was really amazing to see like the endless line of gin tonics. <laughs> All right, so food it's got here. This is one of my favorite dishes here, calamari croquettes. They're made with uh, squid ink. When you open them up, it's just calamari goodness inside. It's like uh, bechamel made with calamari ink, and they're so good. They're served with this amazing uh, aioli, which is super creamy, and uh, I love it. Salud. One of my favorites of the night was the pig ears. Uh, they take pig ears and they, they press them, and after that they put them a la plancha, very Spanish style. There's no need for a fork. I can do this with my hand. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> they do a sauce with it is so good. It's crispy on the outside, it's got the cartilage that's kind of crunchy. The kitchen was crazy. It was like rush hour. Plates going left and right, you know, people trying to do things. So this is hi to the chef here. Salud, senor. <laughs> always a great time at Bruto. It's a great scene to see and be seen. You always know that you're with cool people when you go there. Let's go to Andres. I love Andres. Let's go to Andres. Let's go eat some Colombian food. Let's go dance some Colombian music. You guys are going to love this. We got to Andres, another place that was packed, as always. Andres Carne de Res is a very typical Colombian 
steakhouse or restaurant. It's like a seven-story building of just food and dancing and a good time. They do some really great Colombian food there, chicharrones and arepas, which I love. They do some of the criolla potatoes, the little potatoes. It's definitely a very Colombian experience when you're out dancing and at the same time you're dancing, you're eating, at the same time you're eating, you're drinking. Basically what we were doing is working up our appetite once again. And that's what you do when you dance for a really long time. We're getting ourselves ready for the end of the night, which was, which was going to be the munchy time. We've been to Italy, we've been to barbecue, we've been to Spain, we've been doing like some great tapas. This is my uh, Brooklyn inspired restaurant, Gordo. Gordo is Brooklyn inspired American food and Gordo is my dog. <laughs> I believe we made a polenta and egg dish, which was really, really fantastic. So this shit is so good because it's uh, <laughs> freaking polenta, flavored with milk, mascarpone cheese, Parmesan cheese, and then we put a soft poached egg and truffle oil. We made some hamburgers, we put some uh, meat on the grill, just started frying stuff, it was out of control. Uh, having Santiago and having uh, Felipe in here was fantastic. By that time, we were just like, you know, just, like, putting stuff together. This is gonna be our ultimate munchy dish. This is gonna be my version of poutine. We have some uh, fried potatoes, which we're gonna just throw in. Or, you know, like, oh, burger and potatoes. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> Let's put some cheese sauce on it. Let's put some bacon in it. Let's throw an egg on top of that. Uh, when you guys try this, you guys, your world will change. It's basically a happy meal on a bowl, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna call that, happy meal on a bowl. <laughs> that's just what we need. I don't know what it is, but that's just what we need. It was pretty amazing. Man. All you need is a bunch of people and some aguardiente, and that's what happens. <laughs> and a big bus, apparently. <laughs>